Hey, this is the old gaming geezer. Welcome to part 23 of the indeterminate stuff. And today we will be doing, doing the Julian Shuffle. Yes, indeed. I must apologize for the lateness of this video. It's been almost three months since the last indeterminate stuff video, but um, my reasons are uh, a quote from Star Trek Generations, time is the fire in which we burn. Sort of like the engines of the Satanta here as it does an ejection burn from lathe to bring it onto course with Tylo. Now then, after our um, emergency multiple landings on lathe in the last mission, we do not have the fuel to get a proper orbit around Tylo. Um, this ship is going to Tylo now and then it's going to be stuck there in a highly inclined orbit and we will be bringing out the fuel ship soon enough uh, from Kerbin to refuel. And there we are, our first approach to Tylo. Uh, we are going to do some, um, we're going to set up a orbit burn. And I'm checking my fuel situation as I see how much Delta V I've actually got and how much Delta V I actually need. And it looks like I only have enough, as I said, to get into a highly inclined orbit around... Sorry, not inclined, a um, an eccentric orbit around Tylo. So, uh, I just need to dump some guys into the science bay, and I'm going to do some high-altitude high uh, science around Tylo. Um, I'm processing some of the experiments I've already got. Probably don't actually need to do that, but... Uh, because I'm planning on taking everything back from this ship, but I'm going to do it anyway. But I'm going to check everything and uh, keep as much data as I can as we do our, our, our experiments high in the orbit around Tylo. Now, we will be coming in fairly soon. Um, so we're transmitting some data there, uh, data that we can get 100% from, um, from transmitting. But here we are coming in on Tylo now. We're going to burn to capture ourselves around Tylo. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going to land at the moment. We're going to wait until we get closer. But to do that, we need to refuel, and our uh, refuel ship will be leaving Kerbin quite soon, in fact. So here we are doing our capture burn. And as you can see... The amount of fuel that we've got is minimal. So we're going to be stuck here as we... It's quite a, a large burn to get us down there, as you can see. But uh, we're going to get there. We're going to, we're going to get into a tidal water. I'm saying you this because I did it before. Uh, I've closed one of the um, solar panels there just because it kind of looks better, to be honest. Um, that's the only reason why I closed one. Seeing as we lost one, if you remember from our earlier, earlier, an earlier incident. So here we are now, and we're in Tylo orbit, and we're going to prepare and move on. We're going to have a look at Tylo first and see how how we get on. And there we can see a graphical glitch in the game where we can see the sun through Jewel in the background. I just want to point out that I'm still using uh, 0 0.24, I think, or 0 0.23. I think I'm still using 0 0.2, 3.5 of Kerbal Space Program for these videos because I cannot upgrade all of the mods. Now, this is a ship you may not have seen for a long time. This is the Far Gone and Out on its way out to Elo with Shep Bin Kerman, who has died twice. Hopefully he won't die again. And we are doing a mid-course correction here. Uh, we're just taking a quick look at the ship. And we've just arrived at our alarm from the Kerbal Alarm Clock, and we're going to get our ship into position and do a very, very small mid-course correction to uh, get us our encounter with Elo, which is, as you can see, it's a couple of years away still. Uh, this is possibly the longest mission I have ever done. <laughs> yeah, so we got a long way to go before we get to Elo. Um, as you'll see. So hopefully that ship has got enough fuel to get back from Elo. Well, we'll find that out soon enough. Meanwhile, back in the... Uh, this is the expressway to Heck, which is finally approaching the Jewel system. 
And the expressway to heck is the wobbly ship, if you remember. And uh, here's me setting up uh, my close approach. We're going to do an arrow break around Jewel. Now we're trying to get uh, a low enough uh, altitude over Jewel so that we uh, intersect the atmosphere and get a capture, but high enough so we get out um, so that our highest point of our orbit after we slow down is around the orbit of Paul. So I am adjusting my speed. Well, now I'm turning my ship because the ship is huge and wobbly and very difficult to turn. Uh, but finally, we get it into a uh, position where we can do our maneuver and we adjust our height. So we are, I want to come in around 120, between 120 and 30, 130 uh, kilometers above the, um, the, <laughs> the surface of Jewel. Not that Jewel has a surface because it's a gas giant, but, you know. For 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 want of a, a better term, we're going to say the surface. Now, meanwhile, back in Kerbin, it's time to launch the uh, refuel ship, the rescue ship. Uh, this ship has got enough fuel in it to still use part of its launch stage, which is the stage that is currently burning, to eject from Kerbin orbit and put us on a uh, semi-high energy transfer out to Jewel. It's not a totally high energy transfer, but... Uh, because I didn't want to waste too much fuel, because I'm going to need a lot of fuel to refuel the, um, the Satanta when I get out there. And uh, here we are burning away. We're getting out of Kerbin orbit. And on there we have uh, Jebediah and Bill Kerman. Uh, they weren't, this was supposed to be an unmanned ship. Uh, I'm not really sure how they managed to get on board, but, uh, well, you know Jeb. Jeb wants to get on the ship. Well, Jeb gets on the ship, and that's just the way it is. Uh, that's the way it always is. And so, there we have our uh, fairly good encounter with Jewel. Now, back to the expressway to heck as we approach Jewel to do our aerobrake brake maneuver. Now, I actually did this once a couple of different times because I, I, uh, I went way too low the first couple of times. But here we are now, we're dropping towards Jewel, and we're about to start skimming across the atmosphere. I'm trying to... Uh, I want to, you know, as we're closing in, I'm going to get the ship into a slightly better position. Hopefully, this uh, this will be an arrow breaking as in slow down maneuver, and not an arrow breaking as in disintegrate maneuver. <laughs> because, well, this ship, as you know, is wobbly as hell. You also you also may note that it uh, it moves very very slowly, and it's got so many RCS thrusters that every time I I do a, a burst of RCS, it, uh, well, it burns through the fuel quite fast. So here we are now. We are slowing down. We are in the Julian atmosphere right now. We are at a head 130 kilometers above the surface and dropping. And so there is our orbit turning around. We've got an encounter there with another planet. I can't remember one of the moons. I can't remember which one that was. Not that it really matters. I don't think I even looked to see which one it was. But we are still going... And now we have flipped. We are now in an orbit. We find that out as the ca camera flips. But we need the orbit to be quite high. Uh, we're at 127 kilometers above the surface. I I did uh, air inverted commas there. Um, but now we are starting to rise again. Slowly. So we have successfully, well possibly successfully aero braked at this point. But now I want to get the, uh, the, the, uh, my, the highest point of my orbit above Jewel to be rather close to Paul's orbit, uh, because Paul is going to be our first stop with this ship. And so it's still dropping, um, and we're still rising out of the atmosphere. We're now back up to 130 meters, kilometers, sorry, above the surface. And uh, and then we're out. We're now out. And we've, we're a little bit low, a little bit lower than I planned, but it's not too bad. And there's me setting up a maneuver node so that when I get come around again, I will be outside of Jules' atmosphere. And I did a, a quick um, inclination adjustment there while I was doing that. So here we have the expressway to heck uh, doing a, sh a flyby of uh, Tylo. Uh, we came very close. We actually um, went into Tylo's sphere of influence for a short time. Uh, and there you can see me turning the ship there to uh, 
line up with my next maneuver note. I did consider stopping off at Tylo and um, getting some fuel to the Satanta, but I figured... Uh, let, let this mission go as planned, and I've got a refuel ship on the way out to rescue the Satanta. So this the mission of the Expressway to Heck is going to continue as planned. Um, I thought about that for quite a bit, actually, whether I was going to do that, but uh, I decided not to in the end. So here's me setting up a maneuver node to get myself back up to uh, Paul's orbit. Um, and I set it up so that I would have to do it in about 10 orbits or 5 orbits or whatever it was. I can't remember offhand. And here is me slowly turning the ship. At this point, um, I think I have almost run out of RCS fuel on this ship. Um, I'm getting close to the, the running on fumes at this point. But... Um, and there's a nice view of us high over, over Jewel, and we are setting up to do. What are we doing here now? We're setting up to do uh, some science, actually, some high, high science over Jewel because we actually hadn't done that before. So we're going to uh, do a lot of science, do our materials bay, our goo, get our temperature, and whatever else we can get. Um, I'm going to pop out one of the guys to collect some of this information. Uh, well, I've got to put some guys into the into the lab first. Well, no, he's actually going to go and pick up... He's going to go and collect the data from the experiment base. And then we're going to get him back into the lab and we're going to clean the experiment base so we can reuse them when those landers go and do their thing, which they will be doing fairly soon, hopefully. So, first of all, we uh, go in and collect the data from the materials bay and we bump into it and we screw around a bit trying to get it uh this what you're seeing here is the first time i'd played kerbal space program in quite a while i had about half of this stuff uh recorded a couple of months ago and then i didn't play for a couple of months i just didn't have time so i was kind of uh i was kind of rusty my eva control was a little rusty shall we say it took me a long time to remember what the hell I was doing with this. I had to watch the last couple of videos to try and remember what the hell I was doing in this whole series. But, uh, so we've got our, our stuff, we've got our, uh, data from those, from those experiment bays, and we're getting a team into the science bay. I really, the expressway to heck, I really like the look of it. It's big, it's chunky, it's got, um, it's got girders and cool stuff like that, but man, it's a nightmare to fly. It just wobbles so much. Oh well. <laughs> now, on the expressway to heck, I also have two small probes. One of, them, one of which I'm releasing now and spinning around, as I remember to turn on the SAS. As I said, it's been a long time since I played this game. Um, and uh, this probe is going to head out to Bop. Um, because it's... You know we're close to the uh, the we're close to a bop uh, orbit up there at the highest part. Of our uh, periapsis there is quite. I'm sorry, our apoapsis there is quite close to a bop orbit. So I'm going to take this opportunity to dump this probe and uh, drop it into bop orbit. And this and I remembered. Luckily, I totally forgotten, but I remembered just before um, that I needed to extend the solar panels. Otherwise, this thing would be dead. So. Uh, Thank you, um, the spirit of Scott Manley was sitting over my shoulder there. <laughs> Otherwise, oopsies. <laughs> so this is, uh, as I'm going to call it, because it's going out to Bop, I figure I mean, it needs a nice name like the uh, Bippity Bop Probe. So, uh, yeah, Bippity Bop Probe it is. So Bippity Bop Probe is going out to Bop. And so here's a Bippity Bop Probe doing a quick burn to raise its orbit or to get its orbit right into close to Bop. Um, no, no, that wasn't what I was doing. I was, I was thinking I was just getting it away from the, um, from the expressway to heck. Now at this point I ran into a little problem. I was trying to set maneuver notes to get this thing into the uh, same inclination as Bop. However, it just wasn't working. I wasn't able to create a maneuver note and I don't really know why. Uh, so I figured I'd move on and come back to it after I release the second probe. And so this is the second probe, which I will be sending out to Val. And uh, I racked my brain here for a little while. 
while I spun the ship around and almost smacked it into the into the expressway to heck. Uh, I was racking my brain and I couldn't honestly think of a funny, stupid um, Val name. So this thing is just called a Val probe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you were expecting more from me, but I am not a performing monkey. I am a monkey, but who does not perform? <laughs> okay. So there I am getting a getting into a fairly close approach to Val, and with a little bit of jiggery pokery on my uh, maneuver node, I get um, into a a similar orbit to to Val, and there's me changing the name to Val Probe. Boring, I know. Val Probe it is. That's just the way it is. So now we need to get the um, to get the expressway to heck out to Paul. So here's me slowly, very, 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 very slowly turning the ship. Because as I've said now, I've pretty much run out of RCS fuel for this thing. So, and it takes a long time to turn. So here we are burning now to raise my orbit up into the same orbit as Bop. So hopefully we can get an encounter. And uh, that's going to take some time. We're burning a lot of fuel to do so. However, this ship has got Enormous amounts of fuel. Um, those two drop tanks on the sides, they're still full. Uh, the orange tank in the middle, well, it's its not empty yet, but uh, it's getting down there. So basically we have probably a drop tank and a third or and a quarter of fuel left. And we're going to use quite a bit of that to get out to Paul. Uh, and then we will see where we go from there. Uh, hopefully we'll be dropping the drop tanks soon. Now, we are going to be turning the ship again, and this time I figure I may as well just increase speed to 10 times normal speed. Now, normally I play my videos at 2 times normal speed, but for this, turning the ship, and I'm trying to find the maneuver node because I couldn't find it, I figured I'd, you know, just show, show my ineptitude at 10 times normal speed. So finally I find the maneuver node, and I overshoot, and I bring it back, and... And the ship is wobbling like crazy, and we finally get on our maneuver node, and we we accelerate time to get around. So then we cut back to the uh, the Val probe. I think this is no, this is the yes, this is the Val probe, and I am getting it into a. Oh no, it's the Bop. Sorry, this is the Bop probe, uh, and I'm just getting it into a encounter with Bop. And there we go. There is an encounter with Bop. So I'm very pleased with that. This is my first attempt, so I figure I'd have to go around a few more times before I got an encounter, but I got lucky. And I will take that luck. Meanwhile, my Val probe is doing some high altitude uh, experiments over Val uh, because we are rapidly approaching Val at this point. And these, these experiments, uh, is, I'm just doing them and I'm transmitting them. I know I'm not getting all the science that I should be, but... I have no other way of, of doing that with this probe. Um, and so here we are approaching Val. We're getting close in. Val looks very pretty. I've never been to Val before. Um, I am going to get in here and get in close over Val. And I'm going to start uh, burning my engines very, very soon. Now, at this point, uh, our our data, our, <laughs> our instruments on the ship begin to pick up some strange signals from the southern hemisphere of Val. We may have to investigate that at some point. Uh, it seems like there's an unusual rock formation on the southern hemisphere close to the pole. We'll have to be... When the boys back in the lab are going to have to study that data very, very closely and try and figure out what the hell they're seeing. We may have to send a ship at some point to investigate the strange signals coming from Val. But for now... This probe is doing its final experiments in Val orbit and transmitting them back to Kerbin. Shutting everything up. And now this 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 probe's mission is complete. It has done what it's supposed to do, and it's gonna stay in orbit around Val. And it's gonna continue to study the strange readings we're receiving from the Southern Hemisphere. Meanwhile, the Bippity Boppity Probe is 
doing its uh, final burn to bring it into an encounter with Bup. Uh, I overshot there, so I had to turn around and do it again. Um, that's because I needed very, very little Delta V to actually to actually make that encounter. But we got it eventually. And now, here we are. We've got our encounter. No, we still don't have our encounter. <laughs> so there's me screwing around, trying to get the encounter, making mistakes. Overshooting, undershooting, whatever. Eventually, we get out to Bop. So the Bippity Boppity Probe is now approaching Bop. And again, this is the first time I've been to Bop. So we're doing some high over Bop experiments and bop looks like a big lump of poo in space look at that the only thing it's missing is little bits of corn but <laughs> there it is so we are now closing in on bop and we're going to burn to put us into a nice orbit around said bop and the camera will flip any moment any moment there we go the camera just flipped that means we are now in orbit around bop now at this point, uh, I'm going to try and do some low over bop experiments, and I realize that, well, I'm actually still high over bop. I am 30 kilometers above the surface, and yet I'm still high over bop. That's how small bop is. So I slow myself down a little bit, and uh, I'm going to drop down to below 25 kilometers and see will that work. And uh, here we are, we're now uh, below 25 kilometers, and I am checking... See, and we now low over bop. We are, so we do our experiments here where we're low over bop. And so the Bippity Bop has completed its mission. Meanwhile, the expressway to heck is doing yet another burn to bring it closer to Paul. And here we are. I believe we now have a Paul encounter, so... I am checking to see who is in the uh, copy of there. I don't know why. I do not know why. It's a couple of days ago that I recorded this video. And so, now I'm trying to get a nice little burn. You can see me slowly burning out, using a lot of fuel here to get out to, uh, out to Paul. But eventually we get an encounter, so there we have. We have our Paul encounter. There was probably ways that I could have done that and used less fuel, but that's the way I did it. Um, and that's just what the way it's got to be. So here we are, moving out, and we're about to get... We're going to cross the sphere of influence and get in close to Paul. So there we are, Paul. We are high over Paul, and that looks to me like a bran muffin. <laughs> A bra bran muffin. Yes, it's the bran muffin planet. It's very good. It's filled with fiber, I've heard. <laughs> it's great for your digestion. And so now we are approaching Paul, and we're just approaching Paul. There's a nice beauty shot of us approaching Paul. Lovely. And uh, we came in quite high, so I'm now burning at this high altitude to bring us down, as you can see. Uh... This is not the most efficient transfer, I must say, but eventually we do get into a a, uh, a Paul orbit. And there's that brazen bran or the bran muffin there. It kind of looks a little ick, to be honest. Ick. Yes, ick, that is a scientific term. There's me setting up maneuver null to circularize my orbit around the bran muffin. I mean, Paul. And there's me very, very slowly turning the ship. And while the ship was turning, I decided to pump some fuel into the central tank uh, and fill it up again because I used a lot of fuel in that. So I've emptied now one of those side tanks and the other one I have almost emptied. So obviously I'm not going to dump the empty one because then I will have a terrible off-center thrust issue. So I'm going to hold on to both tanks at the moment. The one that's almost empty should be able to get some of the fuel out of it after I do this burn, but still it's not going to be empty. Um, but the weight, the weight um, ratio is still okay. We're, our center of mass is still fairly central, so we're not really losing, we're not really drifting off our course when burning with one of those tanks empty and the other almost empty. So we're going to be doing some um, experiments uh, low over, over Paul, over the raisin bran muffin. I keep saying raisins. There's no raisins. It's just a bran muffin. 
<clears throat> That's the way it is. Yep. So we're doing experiments with everything, and we're going to send out the guys then to... Uh, sending one of the guys out to collect the data from those experiments, because this lander is actually going down to land on Paul, and it's going down to land on Paul very, very soon. And we need a full range of experiments ready to go, so we're, we've taken the the data out of those experiment bays and bringing them back to the laboratory. And then we're going to clean those experiment bays in just a few minutes, and then we're going to attempt our first landing on the moon of Paul. Here's me doing some more fuel shuffling around, and I accidentally started pumping the fuel out of the uh, orange tank, but then I remembered what I was doing. So here we are. We have our intrepid Kedbury Kerman on his way out to the Paul lander, and he will be landing today on the planet of Paul. Yes, I'm trying to remember how this bloody EVA system works, but I managed to get Kenbury around. Approaching the lander. Yes, Kenbury. And he gets in the lander. And I forgot to clean the materials base, so I'm doing that now. Uh, or about to, yep, we're cleaning the material base. Material base cleaned. Let us detach. Detach the lander. I double check that I've actually got fuel in it this time. So we detach our lander, and at this point I realize this ship has absolutely no RCS, even though it has RCS thrusters all over it. <sighs> Good planning on my part. Yes, the old gaming geezer's planning ahead. Definitely, definitely. So we uh, slowly maneuver away from the expressway to heck. We're pretty high, but, you know... From from everything that I know, Paul is very low um, low gravity, so we do a quick burn to do a quick deorbit burn, and uh, we leave the expressway to heck behind. He didn't even wave goodbye. Oh, Cadbury, 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 what are you doing? So there we are. The Bran Muffin is below us. We are approaching the Bran Muffin. And it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good from up here. So, Kenbury, uh, we're going to speed up time a little bit for this bit while he approaches. Well, we did speed up time. So, Kenbury's doing a few uh, experiments. And uh, he's going to drop down close to the surface. Now, that flat part on the, uh, on, the right of the, on the right of my screen there, that is where I'm planning on landing. So, I'm doing a slight uh, maneuver to move my uh, trajectory over more towards that. And there's our view from inside. Uh, it looks pretty... doesn't look like a tastiest uh, brown muffin I've ever seen. So this is a pretty good landing spot, I think, and uh, we're going to uh, jump out of the ship and do a quick EVA report. Canbury's a bit of a daredevil, it seems. Yes. I wouldn't trust Canbury. Uh, having a quick look at everything I've got. I've actually got two... Um, for some reason, I've got two EVA reports over... Uh, low over... Um, Paul, so I'm gonna have to dump one of those at some point. So I'm checking uh, my uh, my surface uh, altitude uh, using the Kerbal Engineer Redux there. So we're slowing down, slowing down. We're gonna bring ourselves down to the surface of Paul. Now then, just not too happy about the slopes that I'm seeing below me here. So. I'm being very careful as I come down. And it's at this point, I have a look at, and I realize I'm on a very, very, very s s hilly bit, so I don't want to land here. So we're bugging out, we're moving somewhere else. And I see this sort of a flat bit in the hill there beside me, so I'm going to try and make for that and uh, touch down on that flat part of the terrain. Maybe this, uh, maybe this big crater wasn't the best place for me to land, but hey, we're landed. We're landing here, so that's just the way it is. So, Kenbury, um, this is Kenbury's first landing, as far as I recall. I'll have to check my um, Final Frontier data. So, he lines up and he drops it down. He brings it down really slowly like a pro. Look at that. He just kisses the surface like a lover. <laughs> I'm not going to go anywhere with that analogy. Don't worry. Don't worry. So, Kenbury has landed on Paul. He is very happy with himself. He does a quick save. Or was that me? Um, and he jumps out. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the second 
second um, EVA over. Oh, this is where I got the second EVA over over um, over Paul. So I had to dump that experiment. That's fine. So he does a crew report from inside the capsule. He jumps out again. Yeah, I don't know what the hell he's doing there. He's messing around. So he drops down and he manages to fall off the ladder, but that's okay because the gravity here on uh, Paul is very, very low. So look how. Look, <laughs> such a lovely run. That was a lovely run. So let's do our uh, EVA reports from the surface. We take a surface sample. We plant a flag. This is all, all good. And so on the flag, we've got Kenbury Kerman. Come on. On the surface of Paul. Excellent. A uh, quick, uh, quick spelling correction there. And uh, yay, there we go. Okay, so Kenbury has done his thing. He has, uh, he has been to the surface of Paul. There's a, he does a quick jump to check out the, uh, the gravity on Paul. Maybe this is a scientific, uh, experiment that, uh, we like to do when we go to a new body. Uh, but there we go. So, this is Paul. And Kenbury is going to get back into the ship. And he's going to do all the experiments in the materials bay and the goo. And then we will return to the expressway to heck in orbit. But that will be in a future episode. This is the old gaming geezer signing off. It will not be as long until the next episode. I will leave you now. Good night. Farewell. Avida Zane. Adieu.